Oh, yes, yes, yes. And the Easter Bunny goes hopping across the grass. <laughs> where does that even come from? I'll tell you where that comes from. The Easter Bunny. <laughs> Good morning, Vibe Tribe. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Rebecca Pacconi. Good morning. <laughs> So I'll tell you where that comes from. Uh, what? Ernie Williams. Remember Ernie Williams and the Wildcats? God rest his soul. Remember the band yes, Ernie Williams, yes, right? Absolutely. So I went out to see, I don't know why that just came to my head. I went out to see Ernie play one, one weekend. It was Easter weekend. And I went out to watch the band. And in between every song, he said the exact same thing. And the what? Easter Bunny went hopping across the grass. Yes, yes, yes. And then he'd go <laughs> into the next song. And then the song would end and he'd go, and the Easter Bunny go hopping across the grass. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I, I see our guest is here. We're going to have to pop him in the room uh, oh, short, so shortly. Excited. Yeah. Hopefully everything's. Oh, we have friends. Julie. Anthony Altieri's on. Anthony's in the house. Sherry Podolik. King's good. on. He already said good morning to me. Now he's saying good morning. <laughs> how many times? Brilliant. How many times can someone say good morning to you? <laughs> I don't know. Like he's right there having coffee. <laughs> How many times? How many times does your husband say good morning to you? Just once? Like he just says good morning, and then we're good for the day, right? It's usually the standard, right? Yeah. Then good afternoon and good evening. I, I like to mess around with Michelle. I like to say good morning like four times. She's like, why do you keep saying good morning to me? It's a good morning. <laughs> that would drive me crazy. So stop doing that to her. Oh, my gosh. So real quick, let's a um, couple things here. All right. I want to uh, just make mention. This is important stuff here, Rebecca. Spread the word podcasting 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 some people might not even uh, know podcasting they're not familiar with it so it's like this it's like it's like being on the radio podcasting without the commercials right not yet anyway hopefully we have commercials someday because that's when you know we're getting paid (laughs) i thought we we just got one like braidedsoul.com oh yes we are going to have a sponsor for the show well, we there's so much going on here. We're moving like 100 miles an hour, and <laughs> we just hit 1,100 followers today. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Um, but yes, so if you go to wakeuptothevibe.com, the web address, wakeuptothevibe.com, there you could download the app, Podbean. Super cool. Super yeah, cool app. I already did it. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. When I told you to download the app, I was expecting a phone call like 10 minutes later. <laughs> or, I called you 10 times last night. What were you watching? The voice? I was something? not. I was busy. <laughs> when, I, when I don't answer the phone, honey, I'm busy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so, um, Michelle, I'm so sorry. Get your mind out of the gutter. Listen to me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Why are you telling her you're sorry? I'm a hot catch. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So anyway, hey, down to show that hey, shave that beard a little bit. I'm listen, I'm gonna shave that beard. I'm not shaving until I get a haircut, until until I can go out into a salon. I have to get in line. And yeah, I'm gonna get a haircut and a real job. <laughs> <laughs> you could call me George. Anyway, um yes. George. So when you download the uh, app, you can actually listen to the podcast by just going to our website, the homepage, wake up to the vibe.com. But when you download the app, you, it's awesome. You take it everywhere. You can listen in your car. You can go for a walk yeah. You can go for a run. You can go on your boat. You could actually yeah. download the file if you want. It's an MP3 yeah, it's file. Cool. Very, mm-hmm. very cool. Very important. But let me explain to you why it's so important that people take the time. The more people that listen to a broadcast, the higher ranking it gets within the podcasting world. So when, right. when you have zero listens, not, not good, <laughs> not good. So being I just launched it the other day, we're at zero, but we were at zero here on Facebook Live once before too. And now we're just like sailing. We're like, woo. <laughs> anyway, so please folks, uh, wake up to the vibe.com, download the app, check out the podcast, take us on the run. With that said, 
I'm going to remind everybody, please, please, please. It's so important. Show some love and support to the show. Share, share, share. Follow us. And uh, and we'll be very, very happy. We'll continue to do this for you at no cost to you. <laughs> no cost. No, no cost. <laughs> Not a dime. <laughs> Not a dime. Just wake up, a- get your coffee, and we're here for you. We're here for yes. you. Literally. Literally. Zero in our bank account. <laughs> Literally. Zero. <laughs> Who cares? This anyway, is fun. It's a good time. That's why we're here. We're volunteering. Yeah. So I want to remind everybody, tomorrow, Matt O'Ree will be on the show. Uh, yesterday, I have to reschedule. Bright Side Blue, we're working on that. Friday, quarantine I with the Vibe that. Tribe. I need two more people. We got Ray. We got we got Dave. D-Rock's in. D-Rock's in. Now, he was on before. I need two more new people. I'm not ditching our producer, but we'll talk. We'll talk. I'm going to get some funny people. Tell them to be in the dugout on standby. I got a good one. Yeah. For us. Awesome. And uh, uh, Mondays, Mondays going forward. It's just the two of us. No guests on Mondays. It's too heavy. It's too heavy on my head. It's too and, heavy on my head. And on uh, Tuesday next week, Donna St. Louis, man, she's going to oh, talk yeah. to us about leadership and achieving, uh, overcoming obstacles to achieve greatness. She's awesome. I'm excited. And then on Wednesday, Flame is in the house. Remember Michelle King? Yes. Bringing yes. her back. Bringing her back on Wednesday. I can't wait. This is going to be a good one, too. And then on Thursday next week. Now, and I have uh, Gareth Asher on Thursday next week. An amazing songwriter. Last but not least, before we go get our guest, our T-shirts are being designed. Bobby Badfinger is designing the T-shirt. That I is always. Can't think of a better person to design the Wake Up to the Vibe T-shirt coming soon. And coffee cups, okay? Because we want you to wake up to the vibe, right? He'd be happy today. New, I've got a Yankee new coffee cup. You do. I got my Yankee cup going on today. Cheers, everybody, oh, cool. and thank Cheers, you for joining guys. us. Good morning, Bob and Tom. Good morning. Good morning, Kay Sandy, and Sandy. Lorello. All right, so let's uh, let's take a chance here. And here he is. Let's let's hit this. Uh, bring him into the room and see if this works. All right, that's a good sign. Here that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good coffee. sign. <laughs> let's see if we got audio. Hi, Hold Dad. on a sec. How's it going? Hey, hey oh, yo, how that are was you? Flawless. I don't know what was going on there. It just wouldn't let me in. No, that that's okay. <laughs> I had to let you in because we were doing the show intro. But that's all right. It's all good, man. That's cool. All right, good. (laughs) But hold on. I'm going to give you the intro you deserve. Yes. And members of the Vibe Tribe that are here in the room with us today, and for all of you that are going to watch this video going forward, because we know you're going to, I would like to welcome from Richmond, Virginia. He signed a... (laughs) He just left us. There he is. I was trying to make... I was trying to make an appearance, man. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> he signed his first record deal back in 1999 with Giant Records, which was a subsidiary of uh, Warner Brother Records, right? He shared the stage, and we're going to talk about this, with bands like The Who, The Allman Brothers, James Taylor. He's played for President Bill Clinton. <laughs> man, I'm sure this guy has some stories. He's got a new CD coming out. He's here to promote it. We're happy to have him on Wake Up to the Vibe. Everyone, please, in your living rooms, give a big round of applause for Pat McGee. Good morning. Hi, Good morning. <laughs> oh, How's Glad it going? you're with us. Glad you're with us, Pat. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Is this early for you or are you an early riser? Uh, I am an early riser. Um, I have, you know, I got... Four kids. Four kids. So. Oh, do you really? I, I awesome. stopped sleeping. Stopped like what? Anna's eighteen. So eighteen years ago, I stopped sleeping. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you could always tell when somebody's on the show when they have little kids too, though, because they oh, do yeah. the show outside in the morning. <laughs> they don't want to wake nobody up, right? I, yeah, I was just thinking that my wife's window is open. She's probably gonna be like, "Would you shut up?" <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, I mean, you, you, you mentioned the kids, you're, you're a road warrior. I was reading up on you and way back. When did all oh, this, yeah. when did all this start? Was this like a high school band and, and you just kept going from there? 
Um, well, uh, I did play guitar. I got a guitar when I was 16, and then I had a little cover band with my brother, and then he went off to grad school in Scotland, which made it impossible for the band to continue as a brother <laughs> thing. So that was that's fast forward to like 94 or so. And then I decided at that point, well, maybe I should go do a solo thing and write my own songs and um, just – before I, I went to Longwood College down in Farmville, Virginia, mm-hmm. and I basically felt like if if I, I've been here for four years, I'm not getting a degree because I've only been a part time student the last two years, so <laughs> I should leave here with something. And uh, right. <laughs> so I, I I booked the studio on my Christmas break, which would have been my senior year, and then I wrote the songs. And that's why no producer. <laughs> That's why no producer would agree to it. I, I didn't understand what a producer did. I just said, what do you mean? Don't you just press record? What's right. the big deal? Uh, I had no idea. I was so green. So I ended up doing it myself. That's the winter of 94. And then put out my first record in the, in April wow. of 95. And that w- would, like I said, it would have been everyone that I knew in college was graduating. So I wanted to get it in their hands. And then I moved to Richmond, Virginia, about which is a, a common uh, migration for you know middle of Virginia college kids who are like looking for a city, but not huge, you know. Right, right. <laughs> so then I started the band in Richmond. Uh, just went around and picked dudes out of other bands, and and then we hit the ground running pretty hardcore. Uh, oh, yeah. 90, 95 summer, um, and then we were we were on the road. I mean, nonstop for 10 years. Yeah, I, I, fast forward I read later. something was like 98 gigs in 103 days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that's, that's a normal thing. <laughs> I mean, it didn't seem weird to me because when I was a solo cover guy in bars, you've tried to play every night. You're like, I want to gig every night. Why, why wouldn't I? It's fun. Unless you're like, can't handle it from singing standpoint. Yeah. But who doesn't want to go to a bar? Seven a drink, a week drinks are free, right? Right. Drinks are free. <laughs> when you're 21, you're like, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> They're losing money on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, all I can eat and all I can drink and, and 150 bucks. <laughs> We're golden. Heck yes. <laughs> yeah. Where so, did you meet your wife, Pat? Um, well, I met my first wife in college at Longwood. We moved yeah. up here and then we split up and she lives right down the street. We're good friends. Good. It's very, it's very good. Awesome. Um, and my uh, second wife, Tara is from Massachusetts. So she was up here and I had, I had moved to a, a town called Barrington, Rhode Island. And yeah, my, my now brother-in-law, my then good friends introduced me to, Tara through his sister. Nice. So. Nice. nice. So where did this little guy, so where did the, uh, you know, I, I, I'm reading it and, and I'm impressed. I have to tell you how many people can say that they shared the stage with the who, and I had to read it again. I go, the who, who, who I plays mean, with the who? <laughs> I went to, I went to, I grew up in going to Catholic school. I mean, I spent more time doodling the who logo than I ever did studying the Bible. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, no offense, no. don't strike me down. No, uh, like I was obsessed with the Who, um, you know, uh, Zeppelin, ACDC, all wow. these rock bands. And then when I started getting in uh, into singing and playing music, I I knew I couldn't like I didn't want to emulate those bands maybe vocally. Well, I, I and I couldn't. So it it's when I started singing, I just sang more like jackson brown or you know uh, the eagles or james taylor or jimmy buffett like work more, more like mellow singers singer songwriter um, kind of stuff yeah. eric clapton like i love eric eric clapton was like my ultimate oh, yeah. for me but um yeah it wasn't like but i mean i love me some zeppelin but i can't sing it and if you can't sing it you shouldn't sing it yeah, that's right <laughs> <laughs> uh, many many have zeppelin. tried <laughs> yeah, oh, many, yeah. And, and yeah so but um so the who that was just i couldn't believe when that opportunity was was put in front of us not only that it was at the gorge in seattle i don't know if you know anything about the gorge i'm not familiar there's, there's, no there's red rocks which most people know in colorado yep. colorado right which is, yep. you know built into yep. the side of the mountain and then then there's the gorge which is like 
the other version of that it's like on a hilltop and it over it looks like you're in scotland you're looking out over the this huge river the and all the seats are carved into the grass it's like just it's look super up the cool gorge. yeah yeah it's ridiculously cool sounds beautiful um so we got to play with them there and then we went to shoreline in san francisco and played with them at shoreline I mean, I, we didn't get to meet them, which is totally fine because they're superheroes to me. But yeah, just to even see a road case that said the Who on it, I'm like, yeah, right, right. Of course, I can't find any pictures. No, that's pretty cool. That was before this. That's right. That's right. You didn't have that. Well, it is so it's funny that you, you bring that up. That the technology of the phone and everything. You're you're and I'm I'm kind of switching gears. So this is just coffee at my table type interview. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I'll be all over the place. Uh, uh, I'm all over the place as well. Yeah, so, cool. Yeah. So, Me too. but but when you talk about technology, the album uh, that you're coming out with, it hasn't been released yet, right? It's coming out no, soon. Just just one single. Yeah. Okay. So this is analog. And in, in, for those and in, in oh, the last record, the the one that I sent you, the video of the making. Okay. Of, I did. I've done two records in the last. That was couple awesome. Years. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that oh. that there was me. The one that's just called Pat McGee. Right. Was a was basically me um, discover rediscovering vinyl and like I know yep. everyone got into vinyl at some point. I got it back into it four or five years ago, and then I went down that rabbit hole, and I'm like, what? And I started listening to these records again, because now, you know, with these devices and, and everything else out there, yeah, people have playlists. It's kind of rare. I mean, You're at least maybe, not, maybe not with you guys, but most people don't put on one record or a CD or even press play on their phone for one CD. It's that- like... Hey, I made a mix. Like, okay, it's cool. Right. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I, what about all those other songs? Right. <laughs> so I'm listening to these records of the same thing, Jackson Brown, James Taylor. Um, oh, love. And and I'm remembering where I was when I heard these records the first time. And I'm like, oh, this track seven is like the coolest. And you knew it was coming after the next track. I'm like, all right. I've right. We've The band has always prided themselves on putting out records that, don't have humbly we we would say we don't really have tracks that we would don't, don't care about because we played with all kinds of bands when we when we went to warner brothers and we were out with bands that were radio bands right and they had like one single or two two songs total and the rest of it was like uh, filler you know whatever they didn't care <laughs> right they were the first ones to admit it it wasn't like they were trying to hide it, hide it. But, yeah they're already on the um, next record to get one more song <laughs> yeah they just like right. the, re- the label probably saves if you have a, a third and fourth great song they're probably like let's put that on the next record right yeah they just they needed to like right like, well just put it on one record no one ever said that to anybody else you know right. 70s. said nobody <laughs> yeah so ever i just i basically was like i'm gonna write a record like that that's more of like all, i don't want to say all deep cuts but just just gonna write and no one's gonna tell me that this is, shouldn't be on the record or should or whatever and if i could just make it sound like those guys sounded in the 70s awesome. um so the song started that way from a songwriting standpoint and i was like i just need the drummer if I could, well, actually, I didn't think I'd get the drummer. I thought I could get a drummer that sounded like the drummer. So I was going to play these old records to some other band, not my band, but like other players, and go, can you do this? And I, long story short, I wrote an email to the Russ Kunkel, who is, I mean, these guys are all going to be in the Hall of Fame one day, and it's, he, he eventually wrote back to me, and the funny story is that it went into my junk mail, and I hired a different band. No, sir. I never, I never saw that he said yes. <laughs> Uh, so oh, no. when he, he told a friend he goes what's up with your friend pat mcgee he blew me off he <gasps> said no no way this can't be right so oh my gosh fi- finding him and he's just the sweetest person in the world um i mean russ is responsible from a drumming standpoint 2000 albums i don't know it's insane oh, yeah. what of through the 70s and 80s like his 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 story is incredible and he was always playing with the same bass player and guitar player right mm-hmm. james taylor's James Taylor's band, Carol King's band. Um, and he said, hey, they're all available. Do you want everyone to come? I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I said, <laughs> yes. And then I asked, well, how much does that cost? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a definite cart before the horse situation. But yeah. Oh, yeah. They, all, they all said yes. We went to Los Angeles. We tracked 15 songs because honestly, I was like, I probably, looking back on it, 
maybe I should have put out two records because right. it was so many I, on the vinyl. There's 15 tracks, which is like amazing. I think I just was so fired up and there was no one to tell me anything different. So I was like, this is a snapshot of what happened. I look at it almost like it's a concert. Like this happened, put it all in one thing, put it out. And it was incredible just to, and then I had Paul Barrera from little feet. who I'm a huge fan of little, little feet, feet growing up. Um, me too. So, and John Popper from blues traveler came on board and, uh, Pat Monahan from Train. Monahan from uh, Train, uh, right? A bunch of once I got the section guys, everyone was like, "I want to get in on that record." So it was really fun. <laughs> the, it was super fun. Who's who's amazing. this Pat McGee guy, man? He, yeah, like, I, I want know. on his record, man. How how big's his checkbook? Well, I mean, Wadi, oh sh- sorry, this thing's about to fall over. So Wadi, the guitar player who plays with Stevie Nicks, and he's been with he's yep. been with Stevie Nicks since you know day one. Pre yeah. Fleetwood Mac, he used to bend with her. Wow. Um, he would, he'd be two studios over working on Stevie's record. And he, actually, I don't even think that record ever came out because Fleetwood Mac, in the middle of our session, he's like, uh, Fleetwood Mac just showed up and like it took over the whole <laughs> session. So, like, I'm like, well, so can, can, at this point, I was asking anybody. I talked at one point to David Crosby about singing harmonies. He was like, nice. I'd love to. Lyle Love It was going to come in. Oh, wow. It didn't happen. Uh, and Stevie, that was never going to happen, but I did ask. Right. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I don't care. I used to be so timid to ask any favors of anybody ever. Sure. And then after this experience, I'm like, the one guitar player was like, the worst they're going to say is no, dude. That's yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. Does, what does it matter? Exactly. Like, All right. So that was really fun. Um, and then, you know, moving on to the new record is the, is the original band back in the original studio from the nineties that, that R- band that toured all over the planet. Right. Um, that was an incredible experience to go back to the same studio in Falls Church, Northern Virginia. And um, so you've you've done like this full circle, man. You you wow. had the, you had this band 20 years yeah. ago. You're doing all these cool things. You're on the road. You're cutting records. You go off. You cut records on your own with all these like heavy duty studio cats. Right. Yeah. And now you, it's like it's like you came home. <laughs> For sure. This record, when I first started it's, it's funny. As soon as one record's done, you're like, I, it's me anyway. I'm like ready to write another record. Um, and it usually goes into a different direction. There's always like one song on the last record that's like, okay, that could have been on either right. one of them. <laughs> it's like kind of like the last thought you had and then you continue that. It's usually what happens with me. Right. But um, when I started writing these tunes, I'm like, okay, well, I could go back to that same studio with those incredible LA guys. They're all like, let's do it again. Um <gasps> And I just said, man, as soon as I heard the first song for this record, I'm like, it's got to be the original Pat McGee band because the way I wrote them, it sounds like 1996. It's like, not like dated. <laughs> it just feels like the original band. Right. Um, so it was really, it was the easiest record we've ever made, the, the most fun we've ever had, probably because there's no expectations of of anyone, really. Uh, mm-hmm. There's no label. The fans are, will be happy probably with just seeing us in the same room, let alone actually putting out music that's I think is good or better than the records that they loved in the, in the nineties. Um, but, um, you know, it was cool. We lost our drummer in 2006 or our original drummer. And, uh, he, sorry, the ones, Oh, thank you. The the one story that that was incredible that we were in the studio, the same space that we recorded with Chris. Wow. And the first take, this is no BS first take, um, at the end of a, you know, you finish a song, everyone's got their headphones on and then you don't make a move so that you don't knock into something and it goes onto tape. Right. Let so it everyone, sustain you, out. Yeah. You, you let it sustain for like 10 seconds. And, um, it was the first take. And then I hear in the drum room, which is where our percussionist was set up this huge, like it's if someone kicked over a drum set, it was a loudest. We all took our, our headphones like, what the hell was that? And Chris uh, or Charty, our percussionist, goes, "Oh, nothing. It's just the refrigerator in the." He was like, "They <laughs> they had transformed this room into a kitchen slash recording room." So he was like, legitimately in a kitchen, but he, with a huge drum setup. Right. The the fridge opened on its own. He's the only person in the room, and a can of Dude. Coke flew across the room. Are what? you slammed, slammed against the wall and sprayed Coke all over? Are the you serious? Table. Yeah, and not, and. Charlie's like, uh, I think Chris is here. Wow, man, you just gave me chills. 
dude, it was crazy. Me too. I'm not, it's, I'm not even making it up. It was wow. Like, like, okay, take two. Let's go. So it was really um, that was because we, you know, we hadn't been in that room in 20 years, and uh, it was really something. How how Studio cool that is! That is chills, chills. such a cool story, yeah. man. That is it just was, absolutely. It, it just it the whole thing was so positive. We'd finish a take and be like, "That was so fun. Let's do it." You know, a couple more times, and. So the drummer who played on our record, this new Pat McGee band record, is um, I met him when he was 11. He was the only drum student our drummer, Chris, ever had. So, I mean, you can imagine touring for 25 years. I know a lot of drummers. I, yeah. know, a lot of, I know a lot of badasses. Like, a lot of people could have come in and, and done a fantastic job. But because this kid at 11 grew up listening to our music and learning from our drummer. Wow. Like, oh. he's the natural he's going to make it feel like what he remembers the band sounding. He's like. got so the same, he's, he's got the same roots, man. He's, he's sure. Yeah, and he's, sure. he's a, he's a legitimate fan of the music. So yeah. as opposed to some badass drummer who's like, yeah, watch what I can do, you know? Exactly. Um, so it, it just made so much sense. And honestly, once we did the first take, it went from being like, is Matt, the drummer going to be able to pull this off to or he's blowing us away. We have to keep up with him because the guy wow. is like, he, he absolutely crushed it. Well, he, you know, and he knows what it means to you too, man. And the rest right, of the guys yeah. in the band, like he's got to, he's got to fill some shoes. So mm -hmm. he, he probably, I would imagine went over and above. I mean, <laughs> I can only, I, I would not be able to handle that pressure. If someone was like, Hey, uh, you know, whoever, um, whatever the role might be, the guitar player for, yeah, if if Eddie Van Halen is no longer here, and I can play <laughs> like that, kinda. Yeah, right. And they called and they called me in to do it. I'd be like, no, no, oh, right. Oh no, no, no way. <laughs> That's right. Too much pressure. So <laughs> yeah, he, you know, Matt. Hats off to Matt because he he really made the record feel fun and alive yeah. and super. And every song was like two or three takes. That's it. Um, wow. It was so fun. And so we put out a single, Broken Heart, which I think I sent you the video for. And yes, I'm we, actually going to, I'm going to cue that up first. Cool. And then, you know, we, we haven't figured out because of this whole pandemic thing. We don't, we got to come up with the right plan. I woke up this morning being like, man, I like that. I'm not in a label situation where they're like, you get one single and then maybe a second single. We don't have a budget for a video. I mean, I made a video in my backyard three weeks ago with my son who's six who can play mm -hmm. piano and drum yeah stuff. we played it we put back that was yeah, the one we yeah, yeah, we yeah, played yeah. it the yeah. other day yeah i played yeah, your video. Complete, we did. that that was just a goof i mean i did it for a friend and they're like can we put this on our website yeah like, well i just did it for fun i remember because the song said something like every day is a good day or what, what was every day should feel, every day should feel this good it's it's a song by a band called jacko pierce they were old Love friends it. of mine yeah and they they he just called and said hey man would you cover this song there's like there's a company called vineyard vines out of connecticut that is that is uh, still paying all their 50 some employees during this whole thing and they're really they're in need of some support and um I'm, he's like they're gonna try and raise some money through the song I'm like he's like a bunch of people are gonna cover it i was like sure so i went to as opposed to just sitting on my couch and with my phone and playing a version of it i started tinkering with my microphone which i just bought like the day before i'm not a guy who knows how to record myself so the fact that i did that <laughs> that's like beethoven smith to me let, let, let's do this because uh, it, it's kind of the norm that our, our viewers and our listeners, uh, whenever we have musicians on, they get anxious. They're like, come on, man, yeah, I, I want to hear the music. You know what I mean? So let's go to a broken heart is the first song I'm going to play broken today. Kind of kind of set that song up for me if you could. Uh, yeah. So this was the first song I wrote with um, our piano player, Jonathan and Patrick McAloon, who's a member of the band for 10 years, but he's the new guy. Um, so he's not officially the original Pat McGee band. So he's not in this video, but he wrote the song with me and Johnny. Um, it felt so much like the band that this is the song that made me go, we need the original band. And when we went to shoot the video, we went back to Richmond. None of us live there anymore. And we stood outside the, uh, when you see us in an alley and goofing off, it's outside there. We used to play every Thursday night at a place called alley cats in Richmond and the flood zone and these, these old divey bars. Um, and we, we went down there and tried to like get in and right. goof around. They wouldn't let us in anywhere. But, um, they remembered you. That's why they're like, no, man, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. we thought you left. 
<laughs> we, broke, we broke every bar record ever. We had more l- l- lushy fans than Buffett. Well, awesome. fans. Yeah, when we're gonna we're gonna talk about your fans when we come back. So here's what I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna give you both a heads up because I still can't figure out this new feature in Zoom, and it's really driving me nuts. I'm gonna mute the two of you when I come back. If, if I can't hear you, it's because you're still <laughs> muted. You're going to have to unmute yourself. And I, oh, I, I learned that lesson. <laughs> so hang tight. We're gotcha. going, we're going, we'll be right back. And Pat we McGee. are, we are listening to Pat McGee here, ladies and gentlemen on wake up to the vibe. This is called broken heart. Enjoy this folks. And that's the Pat McGee band. You're listening to Wake Up to the Vibe. Oh, yes, that feels amazing right now. Let me tell you. So, thank you. Listen, that was fantastic. Fantastic. Cool. Thank you. Totally. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so like 
fired up right now, man. And I have to tell you, the drums sound amazing. Like I'm listening to yeah. it through my headphones. I got a nice mixer going over here. Yeah. Wow. Nice recording. Yeah, Matt, Matt rocked it, and the band just, you know, my my other thing about this pro, this record was to not tell anybody what to play, what to feel, what to like, just whatever you do on your instrument, do that and, do it, and right. do it, do it like your your first thought is the best idea. Yeah. Because we've had so many producers that, not that we ever look at our, listen to our records and go, oh man, that doesn't sound like us. Um but it was, I think it, it lets the musician feel confident and comfortable and have fun because we want the record to sound fun. That, that song definitely sounds fun. Oh my gosh. That's, oh, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I mean, especially yeah. at, at this time of day. <laughs> oh yeah. I know. You, I think you're the first people to ever play at this hour of the morning. So thank you. <laughs> Let me just remind our viewers, for those of you who just logged into the room where we're speaking with uh, singer, songwriter, recording artist, performer, Pat McGee uh, is sharing, sharing his morning with us here on wake up to the vibe. We want to thank all of you for jumping into the room and joining us i know there's a lot of new people pat thank you. you brought some fans with us today uh which is awesome i'm gonna ask everyone to please follow the page wake up to the vibe and like the page follow the page share this video when it's over hold a watch party mm -hmm. we're all in this uh this thing together but listen you have you have loyal fans as i learned when i i logged on to your kickstarter page because it was when i you know i do a little bit of homework and that was one of the links that came up in google Oh, so I'm like, all right, let's, let's just see what he's all about on, on uh, Kickstarter. Uh, and it was over $126,000 you raised. Yeah, that was unbelievable, man. I mean, that still to this day, it was, it just, it's an incredible, but that, that's, that's the new record label, um, the fans, which is so cool for it to be the fans, you know? Yeah. Back when oh, yeah. I was a kid and you would, you would join, join Columbia house record and tape traders and you'd like put the little stamps of like 10 tapes you want for a penny and then you have to pay like six more for 2099 or something but you felt like hey i'm keeping this record label alive i'm i'm giving oh, my yeah. money right to right to robert plant um, <laughs> but you know this it was inspiring it was inspiring to go into a studio and know that you can pay the bill for one thing which is always like oh my god how are we going to do this exactly um and it, but it really felt like it's like a weird thing of like you went, you got to go to this, you, you went fast forward right to the Super Bowl and your fans are carrying you in there. You know, it's really, um, so it's cool. inspiring when people, you know, care that much. And, you know, we, because we did tour a lot, we were kind of the soundtrack to a lot of people's college life. And I've played a lot of, um, it seems like either our fans are either turning, you know, milestone birthdays, 40, some 50, some older than that, some younger than that, but mostly right. between 40. And if you went to college and you're between 40 and I'd say definitely 45, 35 to 45, and you had any social life whatsoever, you probably <laughs> saw us <Yes. laughs> because we, we played all over the country. That's yeah. awesome. Um, I like that. If you had any social life whatsoever. <laughs> If you ever saw a band perform, if you, it was probably if us. you weren't just yeah. hiding out in your dorm room, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who does that? Well, I know some you know, people who did that. I shouldn't. It's probably insulting to people like, "Oh, I've never heard of you," and I was the king of the party. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're, and then you could be like, "Yeah, you just didn't know it was us." Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you were so into yourself, you didn't know you were dancing with our band. <laughs> that would be but me. <laughs> that, uh, well, that's the the fans were. You know, I know it's kind of impossible to, you know, because music is so tied to memories, right? You're yes. like, I mean, I'm doing a thing now and I'm, I'm, I'm not, I wish I was more consistent. I'm just so busy. These, I'm, I've never been busier, by the way, with this whole pandemic thing. I just, because we're trying to find new ways to put ourselves out there and be creative and sure. be uh, present. Yeah. Let's but, not forget you have four kids and a wife as well. Right. And there's, and there, yeah. Then there's that. <laughs> And they're here all the time, so it's right. like we all we all got to work together. It's time so, time to get them an instrument, right? And I'm sure you, you probably have musicians in the family, maybe. Yeah, at least at least one of them, maybe two of them. We'll see. But um, yeah, I just think that um, you know, music can take you back to a place, and I I want this new record to maybe on honestly this pandemic when everyone's stuck at home, maybe listening to more music than they were before, or you I know. Think so 
hanging out in their backyard. Like I, I become a professional landscaper in my side job. That's all I do <laughs> is, is if I need to. Not it work, looks I nice. Go. I can see, man. It looks like you're know, doing a good I'm job. <laughs> hey, I bought my first guitar from mowing lawns and, and trimming Aww. hedges and bushes and awesome and dealing with people. So I have just returned full circle to becoming, <laughs> you know, That's I, charge what happens. Than, I charge more than $10 a lot. So, right. um, a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but I, you know, I want this, those records in the 90s and early 2000s were s- such a, a part of their soundtrack of their social life and the yeah. fun memories. So I'm not foolish enough to be like, hey, this record's just as good as the first couple. They're like, yeah, it is, it might be, but I got to create a new memory with it. And not that this is a great time to put it in the memory books, but if you're hanging out with people you love and your family and your friends that your close friends your quarantine team, as they call it in Rhode Island. Um, quarantine team. I like that. I love it. And, yeah. It says, find your quarantine team and stick with that team. Um, it's easy in Rhode Island. There's, there's only like 200 people here, so it's fine. Yeah, but when but, you, but, and I don't mean to interrupt, Pat, but, you know, when, no. you, when you look back, all right, so you're, go back to your college days, right? You're jamming out with your buddies. You're making records. You're hanging out in recording studios. You're, you're on tour. You're going from, from stage to stage to stage, right? Now, now today, you have four kids and a wife. Your mindset and your maturity is so, so different today. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you've built on your skills. You know, you know, you're, 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 I'm sure you're playing better. I'm sure your voice is, is stronger. But don't you think that who you are as a person today, now going back with the group from 20 years ago and, and, mm-hmm. and going on tour again and putting out another record? I would almost think, and I, I don't want to speak for you, but I would almost think the gratification today is so much different than years ago. You're taking life serious. You're, oh. you're a mature adult. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Not, not yet. On so on so many fronts. I mean, if you listen to this record, I got I got to get you guys a copy of it. Please, I had to please stop do. Mys- stop myself from from writing every song as like a dad anthem because. <laughs> I mean, lyrically, that was not a topic I would ever even have really bothered with when I was 21, 23, 27, whatever. I was, it was not that we were singing about, you know, drinking and, and screwing and all the, you know, whatever. Right. right. We, we weren't Leonard Skinner, but, um, <laughs> which would have been awesome, by the way. Right. Um, no, nobody can argue with that. I, I always no. wish, I'm like, man, I wish I started off, I wish I had another band that had a, a lyrical content that's slightly like way edgier than what I do. Cause if I tried to put anything like that in now, they'd be like, what are you doing? Right. So, but, um, yeah, what happened to you, I, man? <laughs> yeah. You sicko. Um, but sicko. anyway, anyways, long story short, I, I did, um, lyrically it's, it's a different album. Um, and it does mean a lot. It means a lot to everyone in the band. Um, everything is just more like, I, we're just appreciative. We look around there. We know a lot of bands that toured with us in the nineties and, some of them were big bands on, on Warner brothers and they maybe had a big song and they don't exist anymore. Because right. They, right. They relied on that one song. And when the, and when that goes away, cause it always goes away, no matter who you are. Um, if you don't keep, keep feeding that beast of, uh, you know, chasing that single, you're, you know, you're out, you're, you're done. Yeah. And, um, right. and with us, it was always about, the fans and the vibe of the show, the songs that they were all, it didn't matter what we played. I grew up, still am a huge Grateful Dead fan. So like they play different stuff every night. Right. It, it doesn't, doesn't really matter what they play. Sure. Um, you're just appreciative of what they're giving you in the moment. And that's kind of like the vibe we try and put out there. With, yeah. With yeah. Less, with less hallucinogenics. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know? <laughs> it's probably a good call. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, well, well it, it, it's funny because what you're saying right now, um, I know, you know, uh, Keaton Simons, right? Because he actually oh. your name came yeah. up. I was on the phone with him last week and, and your name came up. He goes, you know who you got to get on your show, man. You got to call this Pat McGee <laughs> guy. And I go, yeah, well, we because we had, we had challenges in the beginning of communicating <laughs> and making this happen. Right. So uh, and, and I am happy. Yeah, 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 I'm happy I'm you made it. Did it go to spam? 
<laughs> this didn't go to spam. They went. Man, I I swear to God, I'm like I told my wife, I'm like I need one of those giant boards on the wall that has like tells me what I'm doing. She's like, you know, like a calendar. Like, yeah, a calendar. Yeah. With like, she's like, do they have a you have a calendar on your phone? I'm like, that's no good. I need to yeah. I need to walk by it and see it on the daily. Like, I'm the same way. I'm doing something every day. Tomorrow, yeah. what, what is today? Tuesday, Wednesday? I don't know. Yeah, tomorrow, uh, I'm yeah. Doing Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Nobody I can't knows. even remember what, but I, ha I have something tomorrow, and then I'm sure the people that that know I have something tomorrow, like he better remember. Uh, <laughs> Friday, I, Friday, I'm doing a thing for my old college, like a virtual alumni weekend. Aww, nice. nice. Um, which, if they want to mail me a degree, that'd be all right too. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, <laughs> don't, don't they do that kind of thing? Yes, they do. Um, I'm not an alumni if I didn't graduate. Um, so you're an alumni and, of the stage, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess alumni of the of the bar across the street, but um, it's that's it's important. Really, uh, so <laughs> this, and then Saturday I'm doing the like a wine tasting, a virtual wine tasting. Oh, I cool. be, I say yes to everything. If you ask me to do something, I'm gonna do it. It might take me a second to like like with us. It was like it took a second to line it all up. But I'm so glad you did ask. This does make me feel like we're back on the road and we have six a.m., seven a.m. TV radio. Yeah, show. man, this is we awesome. Do that. At first, I'm like, people. When I told people I was doing this, they're like, "What?" They acted like I was getting up in the middle of the night and <laughs> and like hosting right. a concert. Like, I'm like, this is what I normally would do. Yeah, right. you know. And I, and I see you when when we. I didn't know if you were going to be sitting at your kitchen table right. or what. But I see you here with like <laughs> professional situation. The two of you. I'm like, okay, this is like this is just like being. People are still doing this. This is cool. You, like, you, you know, it's you know, it's awesome though. So um, we we were playing. Uh, I, I had a schedule mix up, and I have to reschedule. I booked a group out of California, and I never told them I was on the East Coast. And we didn't discover this until the night before. And they're like, "Wait a minute, we're not getting up at four o'clock in the morning." What are you talking about? So I'm like, "Beck, we're on by ourselves tomorrow. We'll just like small talk." We actually talked about what hot dogs were made of. This is this is just yesterday. Yeah. So Don't so tell me. <laughs> no, no, you, we. Even played a video know. so i Wait decided it would be kind of cool to play the videos of upcoming artists so we played one of your videos and what i That's thought was cool. really cool is in the chat room yesterday there was some banter going on between uh two people in the chat room saying hey this is an awesome opportunity for us to learn about new music like i yes, haven't listened to a new it. album in a long time and they were literally like thanks joe for bringing these musicians to the show mm -hmm. this is Thank super so cool much. this is like like years ago when you went on to the radio station stuff that's what that's our job is to bring new music sure. and and make sure it's good like that's the right. one thing oh, every man. every artist on the show is outstanding and and oh, i'm gonna make sure that that's always me. the case yeah no man oh my god yeah, it's like it's a great opportunity now, you know, um, you know, and thanks Keaton. Keaton's a, a dear friend of mine. He's great. Guy. I host, I host an event called down the hatch in North Carolina. It's a music festival. Mm -hmm. Basically what you're doing here. I do it on the beach. Uh, although we had to get pushed off to September and hopefully we still September, but, um, it's every May. It's right. the 12th year. Um, I bring in artists that have opened for me that I think are freaking amazing and people might not know who they are. Keaton was on that list at the very beginning, you, you know, mm -hmm. 11 years ago. Yeah. And he's done it every year. So yeah. He's awesome. It's become like a thing. And, um, and I, I yeah. also want to give a shout out to to uh, Jason Adamo and Doug Castine because oh, they were the originals yeah. that they gave me your name. And it was just kind of funny because they're in Raleigh and, and they're on the show and we had a great time and and they turned, you know, Jason's been a, an amazing person to be in touch with on this yeah. aspect. He's hooked me up with so many great artists. But I think it was Doug that actually said to me, oh, my gosh, man, Pat McGee has a way of yeah. he, he this is what he said about you. And I'm pretty sure it was either Doug or Keaton who said this and I can't remember. But they said Pat McGee has a way of attracting some of the best musicians in the business. That's an awesome compliment to you. Yeah, man. That totally. <laughs> yeah. Is. That's really sweet. I mean, yeah. Uh, cheers to Doug. Doug's a fellow coffee freakazoid. Oh, I know. I heard about his little coffee <laughs> blog that he has going oh, yeah. on. <laughs> so listen, I, we're I, um, gonna play. We're gonna. Yeah, we, I, I, Doug and Jason's got his new album out, Looking Glass, which is awesome. Fantastic, Doug fantastic, is just a fantastic player and. 
Yeah. Um, it's funny because Keaton introduced me to Jace. Keaton said, you got to get Jason it down the hatch. I was like, okay, cool. And then I just said, I invited, I didn't even listen to a single note. If Keaton tells me somebody's good and he knows that we've all gone through this thing, he knows yeah. what I'm looking for. Right. Same yeah. here. Everyone at that event is someone, I, I always do this to myself. I'm like, if James Taylor came over and had dinner, would I be totally cool being like, hey, hey, Jason, get it from the table and play a song. Right. And, and not be like, he's not going to like this. Right. That's kinda, I don't know why I think like James Taylor's like the judge. It's, he, he is. Who I hold in high regard. <laughs> he's James so Taylor. <laughs> if, if he is, would be like, wow, that's really cool moving. So I kind of, everyone that comes, not that every music festival isn't filled with incredible people, but yeah, I have to be f- moved by what they do and, and think it's, they're only trying to be themselves. They are not trying to like, copy some other artist or sure right you know that's what i look that's what i always look for that's what i hope to do in my own music i don't try and sound like somebody else well you're being on you're being honest through your music i mean if you can't you can't be honest to your to your yeah to your true art then you know you can't fake it it's cool to have influences that you can kind of hear um but it's also more vulnerable and um it's more attractive, I think, to everyone when you're Definitely. just yourself. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. in life. That's in life. You How know? cool it is sure to are. just be yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's such yeah. an awesome feeling. Pat yeah. has an, a song named Rebecca. Oh, yeah. yeah well, oh, oh, that's right, Rebecca. I guess yeah. <laughs> Listen, all week she thought it was for her. I, know, I go, like, I ever wrote. Uh, oh. is the first song you ever wrote? Yeah. Uh, we have a bond now, man. <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, I'm never going to hear the end many, of this, man. Many of many of a Rebecca has said, that's my song. Yeah. Um, it's mine now. It's, you know, if you act, I wrote that going to college and and seeing like freshmen and, you know, basically I really it was kind of freshmen and sophomore oh, girls come in, come into school and they would stand around at parties and just like lose their, like, go for it. They were like clueless and go no this is not about you uh <laughs> well, maybe it is. just totally maybe. like tearing it up and I, <laughs> her name was rebecca no i the school was so small i couldn't name it after anyone otherwise they, they'd be so offended so i made up the name rebecca so that i didn't have to because i didn't know anybody i'm like i wrote down the list of names of people i don't know like well that doesn't sound good like, hey, never rebecca, dated a rebecca no, I, go I, I can't have them coming coming after me is that song about me but that's i don't right. think they listen to the actual content of the lyrics i'm like that's oh, right oh my gosh no, no one has ever come to me and said you jerk you wrote that about me right. yeah right <laughs> I think it's, they they like the song so they think it's a positive thing i'm like yeah you know it's a song about like man i feel sorry for this girl she's, <laughs> she's, gonna, have, she's gonna have some problems <laughs> You just made her day. You don't even know. Right now, she's going, he uh, knows me. <laughs> story of my life, man. Uh, I don't feel sorry for you, Rebecca. So, uh-huh. all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch gears because I'm, I'm looking at the clock here. So, we have a song called well, Runaway, and I played. I, it's become uh, our anthem. It's the, it's our, it's. Oh, this is awesome. You, you look like you're 12 years old in that video. How old were you, man? Uh, I don't, and that, that's which, not an insult. I, my point live being, concert? it's it's live, yeah. Two thousand and six. Uh, I don't know what year is it now. Fourteen. You're gonna, you're gonna be one of those guys when you're like eighty years old. You're gonna look like you're like fifty. Oh, that'd be nice. Thirty two, thirty four. I don't know. <laughs> you weren't thirty two in that video. Um, I was born in seventy three. What the video that Two, run away on the vintage stage, right? Two thousand six, twenty seven. Oh my gosh, six, man! You look you look so much younger. I thought it was like one I back know. in your early early days. That's a compliment to you. Don't take that the wrong way. No, it is. I'll <laughs> take it. I still all right, maybe not twelve. Maybe you look seventeen. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> well, you look a lot younger than you are. Let me. Uh, yeah, I would say thirties. Yeah, man. You, you, you oh, got, that's very good. It's all I, that landscaping I, I, you're my doing. My wife is six. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's all the wine I drink. <laughs> it's wine's good for you, man. <laughs> Let me. Uh, I'm gonna go play the song "Runaway." This is on Vintage Stages, right? Is that the show? Is that a show? Oh, what is that? Oh. Yeah, it's a live show down in Birmingham, Alabama, at a place called the Workplace Ooh, Theater. I used to live there. 
um, owned by the great Alan Hunter from MTV. Oh, I know um, Alan. He's a friend yeah, of mine. It's a gr- uh, incredible venue. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that was. Oh, cool. There you go. Do you seriously know him? Beck? So yeah, I do. Yeah. I used to live That's in a- Birmingham. He's friends with my family. Oh, no kidding. Too. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have his digits. Yeah. Uh, work, work, play. That was a great, great night. And, you know, for me, for our band to have of Chris, Chris. Uh oh. We lose him. Moment on no, it's video good. It's professionally done by our friend Jeremy. Out. Are we still there? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I'll tell you what. You, you are he cutting it in and out. Bit. Let me go to the song and uh, we'll come back. Back. I'm going to do that. That's all right. I'm going to go to the song and we'll come back because we seem to be a little frozen. So we'll be right back here, folks. You're listening to Wake Up to the Vibe and we're talking with Pat McGee of the Pat McGee Band. And here's a song from the Vintage Stages. And this is a live uh, performance. So enjoy. Wake it up to the vibe.
You're waking up to the vibe. Still we only he wants when it so intense that it just can't breathe. Hey, there we go, that was awesome. In the jam on, ladies and gentlemen, the Pat McGee band. Whoa, we are pumping it up this morning. Let me tell you. Oh my gosh. So, listen, <laughs> I can tell you right now. Hold on. Too many things. To push. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> First of all, you gained some fans today because I'm, I'm watching, like, like, I got a lot going on. I'm like watching the chat. I'm over here. I'm making notes, hit record. <laughs> too much for early morning your, your sound is huge you could tell that you have lived your life on a stage man you guys own it yeah that that really can you hear me okay i can yeah no you're fine cool. oh what'd you do you went um, inside i did because <laughs> oh because of reception it, we were having some issues yeah yeah and i made my six-year-old is in kindergarten one room over so We'll see if the school teacher comes yelling at me that I'm talking too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, you're still muted. Let's. Uh... Yeah, I had to unmute myself. Well, th um, yeah, this is a problem that that. No, it's all, it's all good. On me, so. so, a thank you for for playing. I mean, nobody does this, so it's super cool of you guys. To oh, thanks, play man. Video and then play the concert because that that song "Runaway" that was our first single for our Shine record in, from 2000 with Warner Brothers. And um, it was the first time that, um, you know, we had a major label song. It was pushed to all sorts. It, I'd never known what it felt like to be a, a band with a song on the radio. Like we were selling out venues that were 1,000, 1,500 seats with nothing on the radio. Right. So we would have bands open for us that had bigger much bigger songs, but right. they didn't have any, they didn't have any fans yet. Yeah. Yeah. They had people that kind of knew who they were. So runaway was started getting played. Ironically, no radio station played it anywhere. We were already doing well. <laughs> like no, no, it just, we couldn't get any love at Washington. DC. We were selling out a 7,000 seat amphitheater in Northern Virginia and we couldn't get Virginia to play our music. Isn't that like, crazy? <laughs> You're like, dude, there's not an empty seat in the house and you won't play right. my song. Right. I remember, I remember being on an early morning radio thing, kind of like this. They had the smasher trash right. and they, they played this song. And I heard people could be like, this sounds like Nelson from like the nine early nineties. <laughs> Nelson. I'm like, Nelson. Nelson? Like, what's what's with the mandolin? I'm like, what? Like, is this safety is this safety dance? Like, dude, what the hell? I, was, oh I, had sit, I had to sit there and listen to you work so hard on something and then and then you hear people come in call in on their way to work. This song sucks. <laughs> 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 And they they have no they wouldn't say like they they're like we're not going to tell you who it is not that it would have mattered they probably yeah. wouldn't right, anyway right. but um but then we would go to San Francisco there's certain stations like Colorado um, FK uh, um, KBCO in Colorado and K Fog in San Francisco who are like AAA radio but they're really respected in the community they they're the ones that like try you know the hippie mentality out there yeah so they they played Runaway. And the first time we went to San Francisco, we sold out the Fillmore, which is like, the Whoa. Fillmore is like where Led Zeppelin yes. and Open yes. for King and like Tom Petty did his house gigs there. It's, it's crazy. Right. So that's, oh. that's, that song runaway reminds me of being a, like feeling like, wow, we're like a real band, like, like a band that oh, yeah. people are, are coming here for one song. And then they hear all this other stuff that we do. 
So that was really thanks for playing that. Yeah. Well, yeah, so exactly. here, here's what I'm what I'm getting out of this, okay? Because even the, the first song that we played, the Pat McGee band, you guys have an energy. Like, there's listen, I, I've played in bands for the last thirty years. Okay, you could you could play in different bands. You can mm -hmm. go out to a bar, a club, a stage. It doesn't matter. You could be the greatest musician on earth, but if yeah. you don't have this vibe this energy mm -hmm. i think that's that's a gift for you man you guys have this natural uh, ability of it's it's completely. it's an energy it's you could just feel it i could close my eyes i don't have to watch the band i'm still getting that feeling you know oh that's oh, so yeah. cool that's that means a lot because that's not something you can really work at you just like that's right i mean you just sort of um trying to exude passion for doing what you're doing right and um yeah, definitely. I, you know, I hats off to my 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 parents who played great music around the house on the turntable. They're not musical Aww. people at all. Um, between Ray Charles and the Beatles, uh, always hearing yeah, wow. like Simon and Garfunkel, like hearing this music that on repeat. And then my mm -hmm. brother and sister who were like products of the eighties, seventies and eighties that that older than me that introduced me to the best of best, you know. So I think I just have really good influences. Um, and, so if you, and it came out in the music, you know, if you had to pick one, really one vintage album now, now, and I, and I know you mentioned the who, so I'm not going to let you pick the who, oh, <laughs> if you have to pick one vintage <laughs> oh, album that you're going to go to today, this is when the show's over and you have to go pick <laughs> one vintage album out of your record collection, what's it going to be? <sighs> Depends on that what question. I'm doing. I mean, but I, I mean, Led Zeppelin two to me is like the ultimate. And, oh my gosh! Uh, if I, if you're gonna go and like really go to another place and 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 feel like you're listening to something that is unachievable, but but you can admire it as opposed to like the best James Taylor record, I still go. I'm gonna go write some songs like that, like Led Zeppelin two. That's just yeah. that's just Epic. otherworldly. Oh yeah, Beck. How about um, you? How about you, Beck? I want to I want to know what vintage record you're gonna go to. I love Zeppelin too. I also love Kiss. Oh yeah, yeah. You're love a Kiss, Kiss fan. You were. Oh, yeah. She was like Kiss for like ten <laughs> I, Halloweens I in a row. Remember that? I won. <laughs> that was Gene Simmons and Jeez. I won. We got a true I Kiss fan here. Oh, good yeah. morning. I'm on the radio. Do you want to say hi to people? Yeah, yeah bring them on. Who, who do we have here? Let's get some serious bedhead. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I love you. When you have when you have Pat McGee on the show, you bring okay. the whole family. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's get you on. My son is late for school. Oh no! Do you have to go? <laughs> no, you're good. Go get mom. Go I get love mom. it. She's fine. All good. No, you didn't. You're fine. It's fine. Go ahead. I, I love it. If he, didn't, if he wouldn't be like, he's so deer in headlights right now. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> That's Jack McGee. Jack Aww. McGee. Yeah, that, I, that you looked at the other day. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay. He's inappropriately dressed. Otherwise, I'd say, come on over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right, he's under quarantine. Come on. <laughs> we forgive he's him. around like a pirate. He's, he's gimping around like a pirate because last night he uh, took a spill out back and he's got a, a backyard oh, playing man. injury. Oh, boy. How, how is he doing with the schoolwork at home? I know it's hard. <laughs> he just came down to say, Mommy said I couldn't miss any more of the morning meeting. I think I'm late. <laughs> like, it's, the last, it's the last 10 days of kindergarten. You're yeah, thinking, you're reading at a fourth grade level. You're good. You're yeah, good. <laughs> let him go. That's let awesome. Him go. I mean, so, I feel I'm sorry that you slept in, but you know, like most of America, Friday night is kind of every night. And yeah, yeah, it and every, is. We, we maybe stayed up too late last night. Maybe he did too. I don't know. Yeah, no, I <laughs> I had a Friday night on Monday night, and it was yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. I think in this time, you gotta you gotta pick your um pick your Friday nights. We're, we're, well, pick it. Well, we've loosened up the, you know, we're pretty strict parents and like, um, we've just sort of, because there's, they've, you feel sorry for these kids now with like my, I have a daughter who's a senior in high school and it's like, oh man, they're doing this crazy graduation thing right now where the one person comes at a time on the field, oh, announce it into the PA system of the football stadium. And there's just the parent 
Right, oh, right. Oh, it is. I know, oh, man. It's like really sad. So it if is they sad. want to do some stuff that normally I would say no to, I'm like, go ahead. Yeah, that for you. In the same way. Yeah, here's the car. My son wants to sleep in like a college kid. That's okay too. Yes. <laughs> yep. Here's the car keys. <laughs> Take the it for a run. <laughs> <laughs> go have yeah, some fun. Go have some fun in the neighborhood, kid. <laughs> I just bought you a mini bike. Go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> Take it down to the gas okay. station. Fill her up. Here's dad's credit card. <laughs> so, it's, so uh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to cut yeah. you off, Pat. So where yeah. do we, uh, listen, I want to know how to get your music. Our viewers want to know how to get your music, man. Oh, you, yeah. you're, you're doing some well, good stuff, putting good stuff out in the world. You. Yes. It's, um, I do. Um, you go to patmcgee.net, P-A-T-M-C-G-E-E.net. And uh, that's a site that's like we're continually building. We just revamped it. Oh, it's so great. There's not, there's not a ton of stuff there, but there's some stuff. Um, and um, on Facebook, at Pat McGee or at Pat McGee Band. I can't remember exactly. But anyway, one of the one of those sites, you'll find us. And I do a lot of um, – I do online shows on the weekend at, at a place called Stage It. Um, which state st uh, stage the word stage and then it.com stage it.com um it's it started like 10 years ago jimmy buffett and a friend of mine evan they had a band called evan and sharon out of atlanta they started this thing this is way before what's going on now right and and you basically you pay five bucks to get in to this it's like this but it's you have an it's a very interactive situation. Um, it's hard to explain, but it's an online show and you're in there with all the other fans and it's five bucks, but you can drag it down to 10 cents. Like you could pay me 10 cents and come and watch a set. Yeah. That's and awesome. talk about different records. It's a way for musicians to still make a living. Um, of course. it's, you tip people tip while you're playing. They're right. like, it's, it's, I went and watched someone else's show. Edwin McCain was like, Hey man, can you check this out to make sure it doesn't seem stupid or look weird or sound bad? Or mm -hmm. so I watched, I watched Edwin's show and it blew me away. I was like, I feel like I'm sitting in your living room. Yeah. It's so cool. Stage an Edwin re reality show. Yeah. Stage gonna, it. Stage it. Stage gonna, it come. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Stage I'll actually put a, there's all kinds of concerts on there. Check it out. Um, definitely you can see anybody. I mean, there are so many different artists. Very cool. Look, some of it will look like this and I'll have a guitar. Some of it's, I'm in my full on studio with like trying to make it be a little bit more professional. Yeah. Um, today is the day that I get super high speed internet. Uh, apparently I thought I had that, but I don't. Yeah. You're so, doing fine. You're fine. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, this is great. I, I've been having, I've been having some struggles with it just, but then I listen to Howard Stern and like Tom Brady's all like pixelated and sounds like shit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I mean, I watch yeah. national TV and yeah. uh, just last night they had one of the CEOs of the, like this massive, I think it was, um, I don't know, one of the pharmaceutical companies and, in the middle of the yeah. interview, he just froze up. And it, you know, I don't like to see that happen, it but it made me feel good. <laughs> oh, I'm like, look, all these stars, yeah, people on Fallon or, or Kimmel, they look. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they look great. Sometimes you can't even hear them or see them. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, 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 like, it's internet. Okay, I'm putting, it's, I'm making it harder myself, but people, I don't think they expect it to look like a polished yeah. TV show. Yeah. You guys no. look fantastic. Yeah. Aww. So this, this usually Zoom is kind of difficult, but this looks really good. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I got a I got a pretty sweet setup. Like I literally converted a room into a TV station. It it's crazy. I can, uh, I can tell. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun because you know we, listen, we started this because of the quarantine. Rebecca and I had a radio yeah. show years ago, um, and we had a morning radio show, and we had so much fun. And, and then when it came time to be quarantined. We said, let's fire it back up. And, and uh, Jason was That's one of the first idea. ones on the show. And, and it's just, you know, things have been taken off. So and we're oh, man, now we're man. podcasting and things are really cool. So hey, well, Jason Raleigh, says, you guys yo, are yo, Raleigh, yo. right? We're in, well, Rebecca's in here. I'm upstate New York. Nice. Yeah, Rebecca's in New Johnston York, New York. and yeah. I'm in Raleigh. Yeah. And you're in you're in where, where are you? You're in I'm Virginia. In, I'm in. No, I'm in Rhode Island. Oh, you're in Rhode Island oh. now. Okay. All right. I'm from, I'm originally from Virginia. Right, That's right, right. right. I've cool. Been, I've been in Rhode Island since 2000. So awesome. Now 20 years. Awesome. Good. Hey, um, wait. Jason you, says, hey, hey, hey. Jason Adamo. Hey, he's hey, awake, hey. man. Jason's in the room. He's awake. <laughs> he's posted we a few times. <laughs> we were talking about 
that looking glass, Jason. How awesome that new record of his. Yeah, Jason, it really that is. Band, you, guys, it out. you guys are all doing um, good stuff, man. And uh, for, for those that are, are watching, too, uh, I want to remind everybody, I just put this weekend the links to every one of these artists that are on Wake Up to the Vibe. If you go to wakeuptothevibe.com, you can download the podcast. You can you can uh, click on the link for each individual's homepage. So, well, I, I believe I already put yours up there, uh, Pat, and I, I have a link directly to your website. So it's cool. Cool. Thank you. Good stuff. And, and the only thing I want to share with you is that my vinyl record that I'm putting on today is Aerosmith. Get your wings. Ooh. Ooh. No, it's like, bring me back, man. That's I love, one too. love that album. My favorite album, that and Toys in the Attic. You can't beat it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. man. Up here in New England, that's Sarah Smith land. They're, they're, I remember I saw Joey Kramer at Borders Books once. I was like, <laughs> is that right? Dude, <laughs> look. Actually, I, I did a record with uh, Marty Fredrickson. He produced some of the newer Aerosmith stuff when they kind of came back with Pump and, and uh, Get a Grip and all that. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, and uh, Marty, he wrote Jaded and a bunch of other Jaded. big songs for uh, Aerosmith. Yeah. So I, ha I have a few songs that I'll have to send them to you. They, oh, it yeah. sounds like it could have been an Aerosmith <laughs> like on a record. That's pretty production. awesome. Yeah. It kind of sounds like that vibe, which I can't pull off saying like Steve Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. You it's know. good anyway, stuff. Aerosmith, good, good call. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, listen, Pat McGee, ladies and gentlemen, check them out. Check them out online. Pat McGee band doing some wonderful things. Thank you so much. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to close the show out together. So I'm going to hit end meeting and then we always my new thing is uh, i've got permission to use uh, keaton simon's song one two three go because i just love the song so it's become our official closing song because oh, it sends awesome. people on their way to start their day and and yeah, and, and make it happen so uh, pat i want to thank you so much man for joining us and and we'll be in touch on a regular basis and uh yeah it's all good waking up to the I vibe thank you sir Rebecca, great to to meet you over this uh, forum and um, go listen to that song and don't think that it's written about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I guarantee you 10 phone calls within the next hour. <laughs> I mean, and, has, and just so when people write to you, I always because I have a lot of friends named Joe. And every time I write in an email, hey, Joe, I'm like, does he think does yes, he right. think, hey, Joe email think it's a Hendrix? Are you kidding me? Uh, I've been living this life, yeah, right. man. Right. Yeah. Every time I, write, I carry like, a gun just for that reason. <laughs> I've changed so many emails from Hey Joe to Hello Joe. Because yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm being. That's like, awesome. He's like, Where are you going with that deadly man? Awesome. I love it, man. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Hey, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Don't forget tomorrow, tomorrow, Matt O'Ree will be on the show from the Matt O'Ree band. So make sure you tune in tomorrow and then quarantine with the Vibe Tribe on Friday. We got a full lineup for next week. So thank you, everybody. The Vibe Tribe. Pat, you're officially, once you hit that follow button on Wake Up to the Vibe, you become a part of the Vibe Tribe. So we, we, so we love, love to have you it. as part of uh, the Vibe Tribe. We're growing and we're having a lot of fun. Wishing everybody a great day. Pat, Rebecca, have an awesome day. We're going to move on with our closing song. I will be in touch with you both very soon. Bye, guys. Right. Peace out. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, man.